Hello everyone and welcome to the learning session on MSP430's ultra low power FRAM MCU, the MSP430 FR5969. Today we will use the FR5969 launchpad to evaluate the various unique features of the device. In this training session, we will learn about 430's embedded FRAM technology, the core architecture of the FR59 device, as well as briefly touch upon the various peripherals and how they integrate into the ultra-low power framework. The training is split into the following modules. MSP430 FRAM technology, an introduction to the FR59 family, FR59 core architecture and peripherals, unboxing the FR59 launchpad, a quick look at CCS and 430 driver library with tips and tricks, the 430's ADC12B on the FR59 device with the accompanying hands-on lab, and an overview of the memory protection unit with its hands-on lab. Module 1, FRM technology. What is FRAM? FRAM stands for Feral Electric Random Access Memory. As the RAM part of the name already suggests, FRAM behaves similarly to SRAM. It allows random access to each individual bit for both read and write. Unlike EEPROM or flash memory technology, FRAM does not require a special sequence to write data, nor does it require a higher programming voltage. But FRAM is non-volatile. That is, it does not lose its contents when power is removed. In this slide, some of the many advantages of FRAM are listed. As you can see, these advantages are directly in tune with 430's core DNA principles of ultra-low power and ease of use. We will discuss some of these advantages in greater detail in the upcoming slides. So how does FRAM stack up to existing memory technologies? Here is a comparison of FRAM, static RAM, EEPROM, and FLASH. Three of these technologies are non-volatile. SRAM is not. The second row compares write speeds when writing to an arbitrary memory block 13 kilobytes in length. FRAM outpaces both non-volatile technologies easily. Note that the FLASH write speed accounts for the time taken to erase a segment of FLASH before writing to it. Pre-erase is not a requirement for FRAM. When it comes to active power, the comparison is being made across devices rather than simply memory technologies. Flash devices are about twice the power of the FR59X device. At 100 to 110 microamp per megahertz, the FR59X leads the 16-bit MCU world in terms of lowest active power. In regards to endurance, FRAM provides a number 10 to the power 15 that is orders of magnitude higher than what Flash or EEPROM can provide. When it comes to bitwise programmability, FRAM is very similar to static RAM, meaning it can be programmed, read or erased through bitwise accesses. In comparison, Flash erases are usually segment-wise, while the writes are typically bytes or words in length. A new dimension that FRAM adds is the ability to configure unified memory. This means that a single block of FRAM can serve as either code, data, or constant memory depending on how it's configured. Flash is typically not the preferred choice for variable memory due to the erase time requirements, while SRAM is not preferred for code storage due to its volatile nature. FRAM is the best of both worlds in that it can be used easily for code or data due to its non-volatile nature while supporting fast writes similar to SRAM. As mentioned in the previous slide, a major benefit of using FRAM-based MCUs is the ability to dynamically shift the boundaries of code and data memory. A truly unique feature of FRAM is its ability to dynamically morph into code or data memory based on the user's requirements. When using flash-based MCUs, the user is typically required to pre-select the amount of RAM and flash that is required for the application. In the case of FRAM, it can be used to transition between the static code, variable data, and constant data easily and dynamically. This means that as your application grows, you can reconfigure the boundaries of code and data as per your needs without having to change the device. 
This is what makes FRAM boundaryless or unified. Also, with catalog MCUs today, it's very common that devices equipped with large amounts of SRAM mandate the presence of large flash memory as well. However, some applications are simply processing intensive, such as F50 or FIR filtering, and it is essential to buffer the data in SRAM. This is not always accompanied by a need for a large amount of flash. FRAM-based MCUs remove such limitations and allow the user to configure the full FRAM space, in this case 64 kilobytes, as needed by the application. FRAM is well known for its high endurance, which is measured as the number of write erase cycles that the memory can be subject to. An example of where write erase requirements are very high is with RFID tags that are increasingly popular as displays in department shelves, name badges, and even in industrial automation floors where they serve to mark and identify products passing through a conveyor belt. In such applications, a memory location can be written to at the rate of 100 times in a day over many years. The endurance of a single byte of flash is 10,000 write erase cycles. In comparison, an FRAM byte can be written to 10 to the power of 15 times or 100 billion times more than flash. This is virtually unlimited endurance. This removes the need for redundant memory segments and increases the lifetime of a device by many, many years. The best comparison for FRAM versus flash write speed can be seen when comparing two MCUs writing to non-volatile memory at an equal clock speed. In this case, the flash-based device is pitted against an FRAM-based device such as the FR59. Both devices are running at a CPU speed of 8 MHz and executing real-world application code that does pointer updates, data handling, etc. using similar routines. The FRAM device outperforms the flash device by a factor of 100. Flash writes are capped at around 13 kilobytes per second, and this includes the erase time per segment write, whereas an average use case FRAM write can go up to, or much faster even, than 2 megabytes per second. One example application where such high speeds are game-changing is when doing over-the-air updates or re-imaging the firmware on a target device. Writing 64 kilobytes of data is no longer confined by the bottleneck due to slow writes or erases of non volatile memory, and the device firmware can be changed tens of thousands of times with a frequency that is only limited by the communicating protocol. You can also think about an application receiving streaming data over a SPI or I2C bus. With FRAM, there is no need to buffer this data and it can be moved directly from the bus to a non-volatile FRAM without any bottlenecks due to flash setup and erase. Note that another important feature with FRAM is that since the writes happen within the instruction cycle at 8 MHz, the CPU is not held or wait stated as in the case with flash writes. Now let's compare flash and FRAM devices, both executing at the same clock speed, but each writing to non-volume memory at high speed. The FR59 device is writing at a speed greater than 1 megabyte per second, while the flash device is writing at about its maximum speed of 13 kilobytes per second. A comparison of the active power on both devices shows that the FRAM device is less than half the power of the flash device while writing at a speed that is 100 times faster. In the case where both devices are writing at the same speed, the FRAM device is 250 times lower power than the flash device. This is because the active duty cycle of the FRAM device is a small fraction and the device is able to spend most of the time in standby. Clearly, FRAM is not only orders of magnitude faster, but it can accomplish the task with much lower power than flash. This is a double advantage for applications that require quick response time, lower average power, and limited peak power such as energy harvesters. FRAM is well established as a standalone memory technology and has been a part of the memory industry for over a decade.
Texas Instruments has sold millions of embedded FRAM MCUs since its introduction in 2011. FRAM is also inherently radiation re resistant with soft error rates that are below detectable limits. Despite the term ferro in the name, FRAM does not contain any iron and it's immune to magnetic fields. For more details, check out our application report on FRAM quality and reliability available on www.ti.com slash FRAM. The list of applications where FRAM not only provides differentiation but also may be the only viable option is as diverse as is vast. FRAM can lower system cost, increase system efficiency, and reduce complexity while being significantly lower power than flash. If your existing flash-based MCU application has energy, write speed, endurance, or power fail constraints, it may be time to make the switch to FRAM. Now let's look at the MSP430 FR5969 device block diagram. This MCU offers up to 64 kilobytes of embedded FRAM with 2 kilobytes of static RAM. The device operates with an average active power of 100 microamps per megahertz at a 75% cache hit ratio. The lowest clock powered standby mode is LPM 3.5 and this is operational in under 500 nanoamps. The maximum system frequency is 16 megahertz with FRAM accesses limited to 8 megahertz. The supply voltage rail for this device extends from 1.8 volts to 3.6 volts and the system can run at any frequency across this voltage range. FRAM writes can also be performed down to 1.8 volts. The device supports two analog modules, a 12-bit ADC with 16 single-ended and 8 differential inputs, as well as a comparator with 16 external channels. The device also supports five timers, three communication ports, direct memory access for CPU offloading, a 32-bit hardware multiplier, and a CRC module. The FR59 family of products provide a built-in AES accelerator for encryption and decryption. In comparison, this is not available on the FR58 family of products. The entire family is available as a catalog of 34 devices in packages ranging from 38 TSSOP to 40 and 48 QFN options. The FR59 ecosystem is supported by driver library that provides integrated driver support for all modules. Evaluating the device is easy using the flexible target socket board or the low-cost FR59 launch pad which we will cover in more detail in Module 3 of this training series. Before we conclude the first module in our training series, let's quickly look at how this family differs from our existing product offerings. The FR59 can function up to 16 MHz system frequency. The lowest active and standby power of 430 is the FR59 with 100 microamp per megahertz active power and 500 nanoamps standby power in RTC mode. The wake up time from LPM3 and LPM4 is about 7 microseconds. And the embedded FRAM on this device provides us with a unified memory capable of code, data, and constant storage. In our next module, we will discuss FR59 core architecture and peripherals in more detail. Thank you for listening.